Welcome back everybody to Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, my name is Peter Nelson and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about gemstones. Have you ever wondered what makes diamonds so sparkly? You know, sometimes people talk about fire. and What is it that gives diamonds fire? Well, diamonds aren't the only one that have fire, this word. It's actually something called dispersion. So disperse means to separate or scatter, right? And what happens is that when light goes into gemstones, white light, right, comes together as one beam, one color, and when it hits the stone, it splits. We've talked about light splitting before on an episode on birefringence, which you can check out right here, but this is different from birefringence. Birefringence is when the whole wavelength of light, which is kind of like a pulsing orb, gets split into polarized light and moves in specific directions. But this is more about the spectral colors of light, everything from violet all the way to red. One thing that you have to understand is that the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, so violet at the short end and red at the long end, they each have a different sized wavelength. So violet is the smaller wavelengths at about 400 nanometers, and red is all the way up here at about 700 nanometers. Goes a little bit further on either side, but close enough. So dispersion, this scattering of light, is about taking all of these wavelengths, and then when they go into the stone, how much faster, how much slower does each wavelength move? In different minerals, it moves at different speeds. That difference in speeds between violet and red is different. It can be larger or smaller. When the difference in those speeds is larger, we say that the stone has a higher dispersion. When the difference in those speeds is closer, it has a lower dispersion. And what does that actually mean? When you're looking at a stone like a diamond, the dispersion is 0.044. That doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but what you do know is when you look at that diamond, you see a lot of different colors. Just like the prism on a Pink Floyd shirt, when you see the light goes in, it splits into the rainbow, right? Diamonds do that quite well. So diamond's dispersion of 0.044 means that it splits light that much. So this mineral right here is called polocyte, and its dispersion is much lower than diamond. It's 0.012, so that's almost a fourth of what diamond's dispersion is. And so when you look at it, it doesn't have anywhere near as much of fire. It doesn't split light as much, so you don't see as many colors. So depending on the cutting of the stone, it will actually look much more white than a diamond. Diamond, your eye will get caught by all of this red, that green, that blue. But even stones like this, you will still see spectral colors, especially if the stone is cut well. Because if you think about it, when light goes into a stone that is cut well, the path of light through that stone is longer. So there's more time for the difference in those speeds of light to be shown to you. If the stone is cut poorly and it's windowed, maybe the light only bounces through once or twice and goes out the side. So you don't really get to see that extra split of light. But in a well-cut stone like these, these pieces of polocyte or even this piece of chrysoberyl, this colorless piece of chrysoberyl, you can see a fair amount of spectral colors being split because it's cut well. On the other hand, we've got this piece of quartz, which has a very similar dispersion to these other stones, but it's not cut as well. So light bounces once or twice and then it gets kind of lost. Even though its dispersion is about the same as the polocyte or the chrysoberyl, this piece of quartz doesn't show as much fire because of its cutting. So we can see that the level of dispersion affects how easy it is to see the fire of the stone, but it's not only in colorless stones. Now in colorless stones, fire is more visible because if you think about it, it's all white light, right? And the stone is not selectively absorbing many wavelengths of light. In colored stones, the reason we see color is because certain wavelengths of light are being held back by the stone. They're selectively absorbed. And so what gets bounced back up to us is everything the stone is rejected. So that applies to dispersion too. Whatever is rejected and not absorbed is what can still be split and sent back to our eyes. So this piece of sphalerite actually has very high dispersion. It's about four times higher than diamond. But because the body color of this stone is so strong, when you move it around, you only see certain colors that it flash. You see some orange, red, and green, and yellow. Whereas some of those colors like blue, they get absorbed, you don't really see them. Blue, where did you go? So there you go. That's what people are calling fire in gemstones. And this is something that can really help you when you're looking to decide what are these gemstones. So when you look at a stone and you see that it doesn't split light as much, but you know the stone has high dispersion, then that's one clue that there might be a snake in the grass. All right, and that's all we've got for today's episode on Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, my name is Peter Nelson, and we've been talking about fire, otherwise known as dispersion, and that's how much the wavelengths of light split. So it's the difference in the speed between violet and red on the visible spectrum. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and tell all of your friends, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.